as a security professional, one of the things we have to keep in mind is not only are there threats on the outside, but we also have threats on the inside of our organization. Sometimes these are threats where people have no idea what they're doing, but unfortunately, there are people that are doing bad things on the insides of our network as well. That's one of the reasons we have that concept of least privilege, where you only give somebody rights and permissions just enough for them to be able to do their job. And if you've ever had somebody come through and take away everybody's administrative permissions, if everybody complain about that, all you'd have to do is reference back to this video and some of the statistics you're about to see to make them understand why you're doing that. You have to make sure that when somebody is entering your building that you're keeping an eye on what's going on. By getting inside of your building, you're essentially getting on the inside of all of your very, very powerful security technologies. Very rarely does somebody have a very high level of security or at least the same level of security on the inside that they do on the outside. It's very, very unusual. So you want to make sure if you have visitors in, you're locking away your important documents. And sometimes there are very specific procedures. If you work in a very, very secure environment, you have a notification when a visitor is walking in the door. Everybody has to put away all of their information, close up their screens, close up their drawers, put all their papers away so that the visitors can just walk through the room. Sometimes when you get into top secret organizations, that becomes a very, very common thing to have happen. This can be very, very bad if somebody gets on the inside and starts going through your information or if somebody's already working at your organization and they're taking information out with them. It can harm your reputation for one. This idea that you're secure now goes right out the window. Of course, they're now disrupting your systems because you have to stop everything find out what was compromised, and now you have to fix it. And of course, you ultimately may have customer information walking out the door, credit card numbers, social security numbers, medical information. These insiders that are in your organization have access to a lot of information. And if that gets out, it can cause a lot of problems for a lot of people. A good report that is put out by CERT every year is the Cybersecurity Watch Survey. This comes from the Computer Emergency Response Team, that's CERT, and you can find the survey at cert.org slash insider underscore threat. What's nice about that this report is that they look not only at threats that are on the outside, but also on the inside, and they separate them out, give you some interesting statistics associated with that. In the 2011 report, they found 21% of the attacks are caused by insiders or were caused by insiders during that time frame. There were a lot of organizations that were in the survey. It was over 600 organizations. So that's quite a few attacks that are caused by people that generally you would trust that are on the inside of your organization. 22% of those insiders were using rootkits or some type of hacker tool to accomplish this. So this was not something where they were all working from scratch or working at the command line. They brought in very specific tools and very specific software to be able to get to this information. So sometimes this idea of least privilege is one where people are trying to get around that. So even when you set up the barriers, people are trying to break through those. Big increase from 2010 when it was only 9% of the attacks caused by insiders. Hopefully, we're not seeing a trend here. Hopefully, this is just a bump in the road. 70% of these incidents, though, were handled internally. Nobody ever knew that these were happening. And only through this survey were we able to know that this even occurred. This is something that's interesting in that we don't know what's going on out there. It's not on the news. It's not publicized. It's not made public to anyone. So we, this survey is very useful for us as security professionals to be able to look at this and understand how broad is an insider threat? Should I be budgeting to protect against insider threats? And what should I set up in my organization? Is it really that big of a problem? And by looking at some of these surveys and examining the data, we can make a determination on what we need to do inside of our network to make our data and our resources more protected.